What is up you guys, I hope you are doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're editing photographs towards a film slash analog style. Now this is kind of strange because the cameras that we shoot photographs today with a digital sensor, they have the capacities way beyond any analog camera. And now we want to take the colors from analog cameras into our digital photography, it's kind of a back step. But still I can understand it because the colors of films cameras are very special. So let's jump into some profiles on Instagram that I look up to from analog photography. So there are several styles that I want you to check out on Instagram. This one is Forever Magazine. This is a page that reposts a lot of posts from other people. So in this case, we can see the colors in particular. Now, analog photography works great in sunsets and in portraits. And this sunsets, we can see the clouds and the bluish tones, as well as we can see the reel of the photograph around. And this is a template. You can download it from several apps or you can download it from Google and just use Photoshop to crop it in. So in this feed, we can see a lot of variety, but there are some constants. And one of them is the raised blacks. We don't see pure blacks or high contrast, as well as the yellows and the greens are more towards the yellowish tinted tones. And it's a very lightweight style with a lot of grain. So as I mentioned before, this style is great for portraits. And here we can see analog photography at its finest, guys. We can see the colors that are dimmed down a bit, desaturated, and there's a warmish tone to everything. So another feed that I want you to check out is Gold Muni. And again, this is a repost page and we can see how analog photography performs in several scenarios. And here we can see how it performs in urban scenarios. And as we mentioned before, the blacks are completely raised. There's no pure black. And we can see some roughness in the grain along with some warmish tones. As we keep scrolling down, we can see the variety in analog photography. So we come across portraits again. As I mentioned, it really stands out in portraits, particularly in golden hour or in indoors. In this case, they've used the light from the shaders pretty well and in this case we can see again the reel of the Kodak in the sides and in this one we can see that it's a lot more sharper. My guess that this photograph was taken with a modern camera and was given the filmic look style in post edition. So another profile that I want you to check out is Annette Zer. She's a German photographer and we can see that she has an analog style pretty nailed in with some special greens that she has, very desaturated, very warmish and it's a pretty unique style. Her feed is fantastic, she's obviously committed to the style and isn't going to change it in a while. Now these set of photographs I really like, we can see that the blues are very desaturated and lifted and the warmish tones of the wood really stand out with her style. This portrait is fantastic, we can see the grain as well if we zoom in and it's a very beautiful style that she's accomplished. And lastly but not least we have another profile that we want to check in. This is about the light, Cayetano Gonzalez, he's a Spanish photographer and we can see that his analog style is a bit more punchier, just a little bit more contrast and more blacks but still it remains with the same basis. Now this profile is fantastic, we can see how it really pops up in sunsets and if you combine sunsets with portraits with the dim light in the head or the diffuse light it's very beautiful. So about the light is doing a fantastic job. When I see these images, I immediately think it's a very cinematic style. We can see it in movies and he's really accomplished it in a mixture with analog photography. Once again, another great portrait in the sunset. This is fantastic. Okay guys, in Lightroom, I have selected several images, a lot of them actually. Most of them are portraits and some landscape shots at golden hour or in a very overcast day, which we mentioned is where this style really pops up. Okay, so what we're looking to achieve is a very organic and natural colors. We don't want everything too funky or colors blown out or strange colors. So let's get into it, guys. So let's start off with this one of me holding up some binoculars and we move on into the develop tab. So guys, the first thing that we want to do is make the image a lot more flat towards the film look style. So for exposure, contrast and the white balancing, we're not going to touch it. That will depend on each image. So in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is pull down the highlights all the way down to a minus 65, pull up the shadows all the way to a 75, 74, and then the whites, I'm just going to take them down just a little bit to a minus 15. That will mean that the whitest parts of our image won't be as strong. And I'm just going to return the blacks with a minus five. Okay, next up, texture, clarity, and the haze. We're not going to move them at all, as I mentioned before. We want natural looking colors because if we move clarity up we can see a lot of punch a lot of contrast and that's not what we're looking for the film look style is a lot more flat in which any case we would take the clarity a bit down to make it a bit more softer but let's keep it sharp guys so next up vibrance vibrance we're going to go just a little up on vibrance and saturation we're going to go all the way down to a minus 35 so the image is a lot less punchy next up comes the important part. Here in the tone curves, we're gonna do a lot of movement. 
first thing that we're going to do is make a simple S, move the shadows up, move the highlights up, and then the whites, I'm going to desaturate and fade them away right around there. Meanwhile, the blacks, we're going to do the same, not just much, but just around there, so they're not pure blacks or completely saturated. Okay, next up, we're going to move on to the red tone curve. Now, in this case, we're going to put a point in the middle and we're going to just drag down a bit the reds. Now we move them down, we can see that we turn towards the greenish tones and we move them up, they turn towards the reddish. So in this case I'm just going to move them up just a little bit, just ever so slightly because the subtle movements in here are very important, otherwise we get some extreme colors that we don't want. Next up in the green curve, just going to put a point in the middle as well. If we move down we can see all the purple tones, if we move up the green one. So we're going to go to move it just a little bit down so we get some nice brownish tones in the shadows and finally the blue tone curve we're going to do the same just if we move up we get to the bluish tones and if, if we move down we get towards the orangey so let's go down just a little bit happy with that now we can see with white on our keyboard what we've done and the colors are looking quite good guys okay next up in hsl and color we're not going to move too much remember we don't want any anything too crazy so in this case a few things that I'm going to do is move the aqua tones towards the blues, the greens towards the yellows just a bit, and the yellows towards the orangey. That will affect the tones of the trees, that's what we want, we don't want emerald type colors in the leaves, just around there. And the blues, we're not going to move them towards the aquas, instead we're going to go to a more purplish, deepish tone. So in saturation we're going to desaturate a bit of the blues, I, remember I like to desaturate the blues but that will depend on each image as well as the aquas and a bit of the greens, not too much. Next up, luminance. Now in luminance, we're not going to move too much. Maybe just pull down a bit the blues so the water and the skies are a bit darker as well as the aquas. Just around there. Remember, not moving too much over here. Then in split toning, what we're going to do is select a bluish color towards the highlights. Now normally we do the opposite. We put the bluish tone in the shadows or at least in my edits. So in this case, I'm going to type in a 215. And as we can see, it's a mixture of blue and aqua. So we're going to just put it at 25 for the moment. And that's for the highlights. And in the shadows, we're going to go with 37. That's towards the orangey tone. So we're just going to leave it at 8 for the shadows. And if we click this button, we can see what we've done. And it does introduce a little bit of change. Okay, happy with that. And the final thing that is very important in the analog style or the film look style is the grain, guys. So, so we can move the grain around. We have several aspects that we can highlight. For example, if we want a more composed grain, we want a 40 in the amount of 40 in the size. And as we can see, it's there, but it's not too distracting. So it's a very nice effect. Now, if we want it to be a lot more rough, we can pull up the, the size just a little bit, pull down the amount down and pull the roughness up. And as we can see, it's a lot more prominent and it's quite stylish and quite good, guys. The opposite would be to pull the amount up, pull the size down and reduce the roughness. Now we get some smaller kind of grain, a lot more saturated, but it's still it could work. So for this case, I'm just going to leave it in the middle with a 40 in size and 40 in roughness. So it's not too distracting. OK, so we finished the preset. Now let's go to presets, hit the plus sign, create preset. And we're going to type in analog. Remember to deselect white balancing and exposure and contrast that will depend on each image. So once we saved it, we can go on and see how it applies on other images. OK, so next up, we have this image in the fire inside in winter. So let's apply the preset and see how it performs. We're going to go down to user presets analog. Let's apply it. OK, it's looking pretty good. Remember to go back to basic corrections and in each image, you're going to have to adjust the white balancing if needed and the exposure and contrast. So I'm just going to pull up the exposure just a bit. You can see the before and after with Y on our keyboard and it's looking pretty good guys. What do you think? Let's try another one. This one of Danny in Masunte. Let's apply the preset and this one is underexposed. So we're going to have to move up the exposure. Let's move up the exposure just a bit. And what do you think guys? I like the tones of the blues in the skies and the subtlety towards the other types of colors. So it's looking pretty good. OK, another one, this one of Danny on a sunset on golden hours. Let's apply the preset and it looks absolutely gorgeous, guys. What do you think, guys? Now, for more stylized look, what I would do is add some clarity and we can see that it punches out a lot more. But that's not the analog effect. That's more of a Peter McKinnon kind of style. So let's return it. It's looking pretty good, guys. Another one, this one is Lupita, my dog. She's deaf. So let's apply the analog filter. And how about it? It looks pretty good. It's a very subtle change. We can see 
all those brownish colors that we've added into the shadows again remember if you want to invert this if you want the shadows to be a lot bluish you can always go down all the way down to split toning once again and change this up we can change the 215 all the way down to the shadows and the 35 towards the highlights and now we've inverted it we had a bit more bluish in the shadows if we bump up this slider and a bit more warmer tones in the highlights so that works as well for the portraits and all kinds of photography so as i mentioned before guys analog photography is a very wide field there's a lot of ways to color rate and a lot of space for you to create your own unique style anyway there are some constants in the style as i mentioned before and by the way guys i've created a preset pack with 14 of my best analog film look styles if you want to go check it out the link is down below also i divided it into two ones the 14 version and the light version with only just five it's a lot more cheaper and my birthday is coming up in September, guys. So there's going to be a 50% discount in both of these packs if you enter this code down here. So that's a way you can support me. Hopefully you can support me. I'll be very thankful if you can do it. So guys, if you're curious about what the pack contains and how I work with presets, how my workflow is, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what it contains and how to apply them. So this is how the pack appears once you import it. And normally what I do when editing is just pass the cursor over the effects and see which one applies and then just move the contrast and exposure accordingly. So in this case, I have a preset that I really like and I think it really matches the scene and it's Medina. Here we can click it and we can see the immediate results the before and after with Y. And the results are pretty fantastic. It looks very sepia, but not losing all the colors, guys. So let's try it on in other photographs. In this case, we have this other photograph that I really like. And in this case, I'm thinking of something stronger. Maybe the Sinistera preset goes perfectly well. And as we can see, it adds a lot more punch and a lot of drama into the image with the lifted shadows and the tones that we have achieved. Next up, we have this image of my dog Emmett. And in this case, I have a lot of presets that work well with moody tones. So we have Canberra, we have Cairo as well. And maybe we can use Canberra in this case. And I'm just gonna move the exposure just a little bit up. And as we can see, the image pops up a lot more. Maybe Canberra is very good, but also Gibraltar and Fisterra work perfectly. Let's move the exposure once again up just a little bit. And yeah, it looks pretty good actually. This is another portrait of myself and I think it looks pretty good. But still, we can add some, a little bit more dramatism by going over the presets. And in this case, I think Marina is doing a perfect work, emphasizing all the colors of that warmish vibes that we're looking for. And with one click, we've created a very nice image. Okay, so next up I have this image of myself. Now if we go over the presets, we can see that all of them work. You can see Cairo, it's a bit more desaturated. Canberra is a bit more bluish. Dorn is very nice as well. Fisterra adds a lot more punch. Also Gibraltar. Gibraltar is one of my favorites. You can see all the punch that it adds. Keep looking, Marina is a lot more warmish. Medina works a lot more with sunny stuff. Odessa is very strong. Ofeli has these bluish tones in the shadows. Rabat is a lot, also very nice. Samarcanda. Seneca these are very beautiful tones that I've achieved then we can see this image of Danny and I really like this image so in this case I'm just gonna go with a very warmish one which is Seneca and it looks pretty fantastic from just one click guys also also another one that could work in this image would be Samarcanda a bit more flat or even Fisterra and these tones work for all kinds of images in this case I have another portrait of Danny over here the one that we edited and as we can see that these several presets work in sunny days like this one Rabat goes perfectly with this vibe and if we want something more punchier there's always Odessa Marina is also very good maybe I'm gonna go for Cairo for a more desaturated warmish tones another portrait of Danny reaching into light and this one gives me a lot of vibes of warmish tones so I'm just gonna put in Rabat or maybe Medina. Yeah, and the colors are very beautiful, guys. Maybe even Cairo works. Yeah, it works perfectly. Or Seneca with a more saturated look. So these colors are very nice. I like it a lot. And let's do one last. Oh, this one is underexposed of Danny. Let's go for more bluish tones with Ophelia. Pull up the exposure just a bit. And yeah, those are the tones that I really like. These presets are fantastic, guys. I've dedicated a lot of time into putting them together and to make them work in every kind of situation. So they'll do the job guys. So if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.